Last season, the Minnesota Vikings had the number 31 ranked defense under Ed Donatel. They ranked 21st in passer rating, 22nd in sacks, and 24th in completion percentage allowed. I understand that new defensive coordinator Brian Flores has always been known for running a significant amount of zone coverage, but to let Patrick Peterson walk when your team just had the 31st ranked passing defense is questionable. Peterson, he is 33 years old at this point, but he's coming off of a Pro Bowl caliber season. Pete played in every game, had five interceptions, recorded an 80.7 PFF grade, which ranks six out of 82 corners to play at least 500 snaps in the regular season. He can also move around the defense and play both the slot and safety. According to Peterson, he wanted to resign with the team, but the two sides couldn't make it work. Quote, I had the time of my life in Minnesota, man, just the people that I had the opportunity to meet, the organization, first class, state of the art facility, state of the art stadium, locker rooms, training, everything was just top of the line. And quote, Peterson's two year deal with the Steelers is worth 14 million with 5.85 million guaranteed. I'm sure the Vikings would have loved to keep Peterson. Unfortunately, they just couldn't afford to pay everyone. The team decided to extend Neil Hunter, who picked up 10 and a half sacks and a 12.2 pressure rate last season. Also, Harrison Smith is back on a one-year deal. He's a six-time Pro Bowler, of course, one of the greatest players in Vikings history. At the end of the day, I am not thrilled with losing Adam Thielen, Zedarius Smith, Eric Kendricks, and Delvin Tomlinson. Also, I don't know why Delvin Cook is not in these notes, but I mean, these are big time losses, but the Vikings made up for it with a good draft, a new defensive coordinator in Brian Flores. You also have guys coming in like Marcus Davenport. I'm looking at Josh Oliver. He's one of the best blocking tight ends in the league. Troy Reader, Byron Murphy. Let's talk about the draft quickly, though. Jordan Addison at a USC. The best pure route runner in the entire draft. His player comp, I would say, is Stephon Diggs. Also, Makai Blackman at USC as well in the third round. Remember, the Vikings only had five draft picks entering the draft. So overall, I thought they made it work. Of course, I believe they ended up drafting, what, six players. And the best value pick the Vikings made certainly was in the seventh round. They took Dwayne McBride at a UAB. I mean, he absolutely just dominated last year. I mean, he had 1,713 yards. 19 touchdowns i was watching him in training camp and he dropped four passes so yeah not ideal and he's also not the greatest pass blocker but he's a seventh round running back and with again which without question one of the best vision balance lateral agility running backs in the draft i mean he had the third most broken tackles in all of college football he was behind just b john robinson and chase brown so Moving forward for the Vikings, they're going to have Alexander Madison. They're also going to have Dwayne McBride. And it's going to be fun to see these guys. I mean, Dalvin Cook, I definitely hate to see him go, but I kind of love to see him leave at the same time. Just because you guys know that reference. But just because it's going to be really cool to see these guys get an opportunity, just some fresh faces, young faces out there. And the reason why Madison was even drafted at a Boise State, for those of you that remember, was for an insurance policy for Cook and Although Cook's been healthy the past couple of years, I mean, he's made the Pro Bowl, what, four years in a row? I mean, it was time, man. It really was. The Vikings, they couldn't afford to bring everyone back. If there was no salary cap, all these players would have been back for the Vikings. But fortunately, the NFL has a salary cap. And if you want to compete, not only right now, but for the foreseeable future, sometimes you have to make tough decisions. I mean, Adam Thielen is one of the greatest Vikings ever, especially fan favorite. I mean, I bet you, I'm not going to say half of you because uh, I don't know how old everyone is, but I mean, if you're... If you're a Vikings fan listening, I bet you a good handful of you, your favorite players you know, of all time for the Vikings is Adam Thielen. I mean, he's an amazing, amazing player, but an even better person. So, of course, nobody wants to see him leave, but you know, there's, there's no arguing that two things. One, Jordan Addison's a better player, even though he's a rookie. And two, Adam Thielen was regressing, right? Adam Thielen last season, I mean, didn't have a terrible year. You can still find the end zone. But he's just not the same player he he was a couple of years ago. So for the Vikings to let go with some of these guys, I mean, Desarius Desarius Smith, for example, of course, in the second half was almost non-existent. I mean, of course, he was dealing with multiple injuries, but Desarius Smith in the first half of the season was one of the best players in all of football, and then in the second half wasn't even recognizable. So the Vikings just overall in the second half of the season just could not get to the quarterback. They could not generate any pressure defensive line edge it just didn't matter but now they've got a fully healthy team they've got a new scheme 
And yeah, the Vikings are going to be very good. I've been back and forth with the Vikings personally. I do think that they can make the playoffs again. I don't think they're going to have the same amount of wins as last year, but I do still think they're going to be you know a ten a ten win team, wild card team. The NFC is very weak, so to this point, the Los Angeles Rams will probably be in the wild card hunt, and the Vikings are certainly a maybe better football team than the Rams, so the Vikings will be in the playoffs. I like what the Bears have done. I think the Packers still are a good team. Of course, you've got the Lions who I have winning this division, but I do have the Vikings being a wild card team this upcoming season, and that isn't to discredit them because honestly, I don't want the Vikings to have the season they had last year. Defensively, they were atrocious. Yes, they won just a historic amount of one possession games, but it was clear that, especially at the end of the season, this Vikings team eventually it was going to happen, right? And it did against the New York Giants. I mean, the Giants, the amount of yards and just long drives they put together was honestly embarrassing. And then, of course, the final play of that game where Kirk Cousins just chucked it down to you know, TJ Hawkins in a well in front of the first down line. I mean, that was just a game to forget. The Vikings, did they have a good season? Absolutely, right? I mean, I'm not sitting up here and telling you guys that last season was bad got to be better i mean no, the vikings if every anytime you win double digit games you had a good season in the nfl but how can the vikings expand on that so it's going to be tough but they've got the coaching right i mean kevin o'connell is one of the best young minds in football i i love brian Flores, of course as i mentioned he came from that bill belichick tree and the patriots i mean you look at what he's done with the dolphins right completely turned them around in two years what he did with the steelers i mean wow i mean he is Highly responsible for Alex Highsmith having a breakout year, right? He, uh, Flores was also credited a ton for Minka Fitzpatrick. So Flores, what he's going to do to this Vikings defense is just going to be special to see. Man, I can't wait. The Vikings are one of my favorite teams to cover in all of football, and I really hope that they're able to you know, get over the hump and get their first ever Super Bowl, right? The Vikings have never won a Super Bowl, man. I mean, why not? Why not us, right? For real. But I want to end the video on this. So one of my favorite players to watch in all of football and this isn't going to come to a surprise who it is, is Justin Jefferson. So no wide receiver in the history of football has ever won MVP. Last season, Jefferson had 128 catches for 1,809 yards. He made arguably the greatest catch in the history of football as well. Fourth and 18 against the Buffalo Bills, that one-handed catch. Not only was that just an incredible catch, but it also helped move the chains, and the Vikings would win that game 33-30 to against the Buffalo Bills, one of the best defenses in the league, and that game was on the road. I mean, watching that catch live, I cannot tell you guys a better play. I mean, of course, this is a different sport, but that Game 7 chase down block by LeBron in the finals against the Warriors, it's either one of those. I mean, that was a significantly higher uh, stage, but I mean, Jefferson, to make that catch take away an interception with one hand on the road. I mean, fourth and 18, you know, game on the line was just unreal. And Jefferson to win MVP, to become the first receiver to ever do so. And by the way, no player outside of a quarterback has won MVP since Adrian Peterson in 2012. Jefferson, he'd have to have over 2,000 yards without question. And I know Cooper Cup, you know, Justin, I don't know if Justin Jefferson got an MVP vote. Guys, let me know down below in the comment section. I honestly can't even remember. Cooper Cup, I know, did. But Jefferson, yeah, he's going to have to have over 2,000 yards, and I think that's possible. I remember last season when I was talking Vikings, I said that at the end of this season, Jefferson will be known as or thought of as the best receiver in the league, and I was right about that. I don't know if I can say that Jefferson is going to have a 2,000-yard season and win MVP. I mean, that would be historic. That's unheard of, right, for, for that to happen for a receiver to win MVP and just 2,000 yards. I mean, you know, Tyree Kill kind of was on pace and Cooper Cup, and like It's just really hard to do. I don't think it's going to happen, but in terms of can Jeff Justin Jefferson go down as the greatest receiver of all time? Absolutely. I mean, he's 24 years old. He's been in the league for three years, and he's put up just some video game-like numbers. I mean, shout out to Jalen Rager. Those of you that know, you know, right? The Vikings, they re-signed Garrett Bradbury, Nick Mullins, CJ Hamm, Greg Joseph, has the record on I mean, Christmas Eve, I mean, the longest field goal in franchise history. Now that I think about it, the Vikings had that historic comeback against my Colts. And by the way, thank you for that. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I did delete my Vikings Discord because I was so pissed off <laughs> with how disgusted I was with the Colts for that performance. But if the Colts ended up winning that game, we don't get Anthony Richardson. So it was kind of a win-win. The Vikings got that win, which was crucial. Well, 
I mean, it didn't really matter, but uh, obviously that was just a brutal loss to the Giants. It never should have happened. I mean, the Vikings had so many holes, and they're going to get cleaned up this offseason under Brian Flores and just year two of Kevin O'Connell. I mean, a rookie head coach, it's just so hard, man. I mean, it's so difficult to be a rookie head coach in the NFL, and I thought O'Connell did really the best he could. I mean, of course, there's always room for improvement, but... I do want to say one more thing, and it's Kirk Cousins, right? This is one of the most disrespected men in all of football, and I don't get it. I mean, he threw for 4,500 yards, over 4,500 yards. Kirk also had 29 touchdowns, which was tied for fourth in the league. Yes, of course, he did have 14 picks, and he had 10.7 yards per completion, which certainly Kirk can do better than that. But I hate how people just look at Kirk Cousins, and they're like, well, Justin Jefferson makes this guy. Well, how about this, right? If Justin Jefferson didn't have Kirk Cousins, he wouldn't be putting up these numbers. I'll leave it at that, guys. It's your boy Swaggy. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like button, subscribe. Vikings fans, I love you guys to death, man. I can't wait to cover your team for year two.